This video contains a full-length case interview that you can do on your own without a case interview partner. This case comes from Hacking the Case Interview's comprehensive online course. So if you find this case interview exercise helpful, check out our full case interview course, which teaches insider case interview strategies and contains 20 practice cases like this one. Before we begin, please take a quick second to give this video a like to help support the channel. Let's start. Rider is a ride-sharing application that connects passengers with drivers. In cities where Rider operates, passengers use the app to request a ride from one destination to another. A nearby driver will see this request and accept the passenger, driving to pick up the passenger and then dropping them off at their destination. Payments are all done before the passenger is picked up via credit card on the app. Rider is currently only in the U.S. but is considering expanding internationally. They want to know which international city they should enter first and how they should go about entering. Let's start with the first part, determining which international city to enter first. Pause the video now to structure a framework to answer this question. Here is a transcript for your reference. Here is how one potential framework could look like. We want to look into four major areas. One, we want to look at the ride-sharing market attractiveness per city. Which cities are most attractive to enter based on metrics such as smartphone adoption, credit card adoption, and population density? Two, we want to look at the competitive landscape in each city. Which cities are least competitive to enter? We'd want to know if there are any other ride-sharing app competitors and whether there are strong alternatives to ride-sharing, such as public transportation. 3. We want to look at our capability to execute in each city. Which cities are we actually capable of entering based on our familiarity with each city and how similar each city is to our home market in the U.S.? 4. We'd want to look into the expected profit in each city. Which city is most profitable based on expected revenues and costs? We've collected the following data on five different countries. Which country is the most attractive? Pause the video now to answer this question. There is a lot of data provided to us in the previous table. The key here is to prioritize which metrics are most important in determining whether a city is attractive or not. You may have a slightly different order of important metrics, but you should recognize that smartphone adoption and credit card adoption are highly important because our business is based off of customers using an app on smartphones. Population density is important because it makes coordinating rides more feasible and practical. Finally, gross net income per capita is important because it reflects whether customers have the money to pay for this ride-sharing service. Based on these metrics, we see that Paris and Tokyo perform highly on all of these, making them the most attractive cities. Assuming that we decide to enter Paris, how do you think about calculating expected annual revenue? Pause the video now to answer this question. Here is one potential approach, using the top-down market sizing method. We would start with the Paris city population and then estimate the percentage that would use a ride-sharing app. We'd then estimate the average number of rides taken per person per week. We then estimate the average price per ride and convert this weekly revenue figure to an annual revenue figure. Finally, we'd estimate the market share that Rider would have to estimate Rider's expected annual revenue. Assuming that we decide to enter Paris, we found three distinct customer segments, urban, suburban, and rural. Which customer segment should we target? Pause the video now to answer this question. We can calculate revenue for each customer segment by multiplying the population with the percentage that use ride-sharing, then with the average rides per week, then with the average price per ride, and then with the average market share. 
Doing this gives us $6 million in weekly revenue for the urban segment, $9.9 million in weekly revenue for the suburban segment, and $3.6 million in weekly revenue for the rural segment. Thus, we should target the suburban segment since they give us the highest revenue. What are the major cost elements of starting and operating a ride-sharing app business in a new city? Pause the video now to answer this question. You can structure your thinking by breaking down costs into variable costs and fixed costs. Variable costs would be the costs associated with paying the driver per ride that they complete. Fixed costs include the IT infrastructure for creating and maintaining the rider app, marketing costs to attract riders, marketing costs to attract drivers, and potentially costs for a city business license or permit. Assume we are targeting the suburban segment, which has an annual revenue of $500 million. Variable costs of paying the driver is 40% of revenue. Fixed costs for five years of operation would be $600 million, which cannot be recouped. Additionally, the Paris city government could potentially begin regulating the ride-sharing market, setting rules and regulations that companies must abide by. We believe there is a 30% chance in the next five years that the government will ban all foreign ride-sharing companies. Does entering the Paris market still make sense? Pause the video now to answer this question. First, let's calculate the expected five-year profit, ignoring the possibility that the Paris city government could ban all foreign ride-sharing companies. We multiply $500 million in revenue times five years times a 60% profit margin, and then subtract the $600 million in fixed costs for the five years. This gives us a five-year profit of $900 million. This problem is basically asking us to calculate an expected value. There is a 70% chance that the government will not ban our company, and we'd earn $900 million in profit. However, there is a 30% chance that the government will ban our company and we would lose $600 million from our fixed costs since we have no revenue. Therefore, the expected value of this is 30% times negative $600 million plus 70% times $900 million. This gives us $450 million in profit. Because we still expect to earn $450 million in profits on average, Entering Paris would be a hypothetically positive investment. However, deciding whether to enter Paris should be based on riders' risk tolerance, since there is a 30% chance that they would lose $600 million. This is a big risk. What are the major challenges of entering a new country? Pause the video now to answer this question. We can think about major challenges of entering a new country as internal challenges and external challenges. Internal challenges include having expertise within the country, having the capital investment required, having to hire new employees, and having to build awareness for your brand. External challenges include dealing with foreign competition and dealing with foreign regulations or policies. What is your ultimate recommendation? Pause the video now to deliver a recommendation. Here is how one potential recommendation could look like. I recommend that Ryder enters the Paris market targeting the suburban segment for the following three reasons. One, Paris is the most attractive city among the five cities we analyzed. Paris ranks highly on key metrics such as the percent smartphone adoption, percentage of credit card adoption, and city population density. Two, the suburban segment within Paris is the most attractive, with the highest expected annual revenue of $500 million. Three, despite the possibility that the government could ban foreign ride-sharing companies, the expected value of entering Paris is still positive. The expected value is earning $450 million in profit over the next five years. For next steps, I'd like to look into two areas. One, 
Look into the profitability of other cities to see if there is another city with favorable government regulations and less risk than Paris. 2. Consider how compatible different cities are with riders' company capabilities.